in many situation it becomes necessary to supply a balanced or unbalanced two phase or three single phase load from a balanced three phase supply. One way to do let us say for a two phase load to connect the two phases between two lines this is one possibility. However, even when these phases are balanced impedances are balanced they will draw unbalanced current from the supply. Not only that many two phase loads will require a balanced two phase supply as well. Some of these two phase loads are large arc furnaces or induction melting furnaces they will can range in power can range in megawatts. So, care should be taken to make sure that the loading of the three phase system is balanced to the extent possible. This can be done by a what is called a Scott connected transformer. This Scott connected transformer can convert a balanced three phase supply to a balanced two phase supply. If the load on the two phase supply is balanced, then the line current drawn from the three phase will also be balanced. We will see how. For Scott connection, We take two single phase transformers. Let us say here the turns is N. This turn is N2. This is the dot polarity. another transformer with a 50 percent tapping. So, that this number of turns is n 1 by 2 and this is n 1 by 2 and the corresponding secondary the same number of turns N 2. Now, let us connect this end of one of the transformers to the 50 percent tapping point and give balanced three phase supply to this side that is V A. V B and V C and let us see what happens to the induced voltages here. This is the instantaneous polarity. here this is the instantaneous polarity. So, the three phase supply is balanced. So, let this point be A B. So, let us say this is the phasor V B C and this is the phasor A. So, that this is the phasor V A B 
this is the phasor V C A. Now, the voltage phasor, phasor V M C, V M C will be half of V B C, this is the point M, V M C. And what will be the voltage phasor V A M? V A M will be V A C minus V M C, V A C minus V M C, V A C is in this direction, this is V M C. So, the voltage phasor V A M will be this. It shows that the voltage phasor V A M is at right angle to the voltage phasor V B C. Hence, the induced voltage V A will be in phase with the voltage V A M. So, this will be the voltage V A. And its magnitude will be N 2 by N into V a m, whereas the voltage phasor V b will be in phase with the voltage V b c. So, this will be the voltage phasor V b and its magnitude will be n 2 by n 1 into V b c. Now, if we want the <coughs> if we want the voltages V A B and V B C to be balanced to phase that is they are already 90 degree and if we want their magnitudes also to be same, then it is imperative that we should have N 2 by N into a V A M should be equal to N 2 by N 1 into V B C or we want N by N 1 should be equal to N by N 1 should be equal to V A M by V B C. Now, from this phasor diagram V A M by V B C equal to root 3 by 2 or equal to 0 0.867. Hence, number of turns should be here root 3 by 2 into N 1. So, a Scott connected transformer can be obtained by 2 single phase transformers with turns N 1 and N 2. The first any suitable turns ratio N 1 by N 2 with one transformer having a tapping at 86.7 percent, the other transformer having a tapping at 50 percent. Now, we connect the 86.7 percent tapping to the 50 percent tapping and then give three phase balance supply in this manner. V A, V B, 
V C. In which case we have just seen that the induced voltages V A and V B this instantaneous polarity we have seen at no load mod of V A equal to mod of V B equal to N 2 by N 1 into V L L of the primary and V A leaves V B by 90 degree. So, this is at no load. Now, let us see what happens. So, at no load we have got a balanced two phase system. Now, let us see what happens if we connect a balanced load of some arbitrary power factor that is we connect two impedances z to this transformer. Once we connect impedance z, there will be a current I A flowing in this and I B flowing in this. Now, this is V A, this is V B. If these are balanced impedances, then this will be I A and this will be by B, this will also the currents will also be balanced with a power factor angle of phi. What will happen to the primary currents? Let us see that. Let us say the primary currents are I A here, I B here and I C here. If we neglect the magnetization current of the transformers, which are very small in any case, then I A, I capital A will be the reflection of I small a. Hence, I capital A and I A will be in phase. So, the voltage phasor diagram on the primary side is somewhat like this. <coughs> this is C, this is B, this is A, this is voltage V B C, this is A B, this is C A, this is voltage A M. So, the current capital I A, this is the neutral point of the supply voltage. The current capital I A will be in phase with I A. So, we can draw the current capital I A represented by this line I A and the ratio will be root 3 by 2 n 1 i a should be equal to n 2 i small a or i a equal to two by root three n two by n 1 into i a similarly 
please note that in the secondary the current is going out of the dot terminal hence in the primary the current must enter into the dot terminal. Similarly, for the other transformer the current I B is flowing out of the transformer. Hence, the reflection current I B C should be in this direction. reflection current I B C flows through the entire winding so N 1 I B C should be equal to N 2 I B or I B C equal to N 2 by N 1 I B, but the line currents are not just I B C. The current I A is coming here and then it divides in two equal parts. This current is I A by 2 and this current is I A by 2. The phase current I B then equal to I B C minus I A by 2. Now, I B C will be in phase with I B this is the current I B C this is minus I B C this is I B C. So, phase current I B will be I B C minus I A by 2 so this will be the phase current I B. Similarly, the phase current I C will be minus I B C minus I A by 2. So, this is minus I B C minus I A by 2. So, this will be the current I C. It can be easily shown that I A, I B, I C are balanced. The reason is very simple. Since I A and I B are orthogonal to each other, so are I A and I B C. In other words, I B C is at 90 degree with I A. So, the angle between I B C and minus I A by 2 is 90 degree. Therefore, the phase current I B magnitude will equal to mod I B C square plus mod I A by 2 square to the power half, but I B C we have seen it to be N 2 by N 1 square mod I B square and I A by 2 plus 
i a by 2 is n 2 by n 1 square into half into 2 by root 3 mod i a square to the power half this is equal to n 2 by n 1 into now in a balanced two phase system mod i b is same as mod i a. So, I can say this is equal to i a. So, <coughs> 1 plus 1 third to the power half this is equal to n 2 by n 1 2 by root 3 mod of i a this is same as the mod of i capital A. Similarly, it can be shown that mod of i c equal to mod of i b equal to mod of i a. angle between them is also 120 degree this can be seen very easily this is the phasor i a this is the phasor i b and this is the phasor i a by 2 but mod of i b we have just shown to be equal to i a so this length is half of this length hence this angle is 30 degree but this angle is 90 degree hence this angle is 120 degree similarly this angle is also 120 degree. So, we see when we put a balanced three phase two phase load on the Scott connected transformer secondary of arbitrary power factor does not necessarily have to be unity power factor then the three phase side currents are also balanced. What happens when we connect a unbalanced load? Let us draw the same circuit diagram. Now, we have connected an unbalanced load z a to the voltage g a, the current is again i a and another load z b to 
to the source G B. The currents drawn here is I capital A, I B, I C. We can draw the phasor diagram in a similar manner. On the secondary side, the voltages are still balanced though, because the applied three phase voltage is balanced. So, this is V A, this is V B. Now, let us say this is I A and this is I B. They are unbalanced both in magnitude and in phase angle. This is phi A, this is phi B. Unbalanced hence phi A is not equal to phi B and mod I A is not equal to mod I B. But nevertheless mod V A is still equal to mod V B. So, let us see on the three phase side what will happen. This is the three phase voltage phasor, line voltage phasor A, B, C. This is M, this is say N. So, as in the previous case, the line current will be I A, this will be still be 2 by root 3 N 2 by N 1 N 2 i small a <coughs> this will still be i b c this is minus i b c and i b is i b c minus i a by 2 this will be the current I B. And I C will be minus I B C minus I A by 2. Obviously, the three phase currents are no longer balanced, but still they will be given by the same formula I B will be I B C which is N 2 by N 1 I B. plus minus 1 by half i i a minus i a by 2 this is i a this is minus this is i a by 2 this is i a by 2 this current is i b c this current is I B. I A by 2 hence it is 1 by root 3 N 2 by N 1 I A that is equal to N 2 by N 1 I B minus 1 by root 3 
I A. Similarly, I C will be minus of N two by N one I B plus one by root three I A. How much these magnitudes will be? Let us. try to see with an example <coughs> say say we have a 6.6 .6 kv by 250 volts scott connected transformer the leading phase that is and this is the 6.6 .6 kv this is in one this is in one at 50% tapping at 86.7% tapping the line voltage this is ga Vb, Vc. The line voltage here is 6.6 kV, and this is the two-phase site. This is V small a. Nominally, this is 250 volts. Similarly, this number of turns is N two. Here, this is also N two. This is also V B. Equal to 250 volts nominally. Now the load on this transformer on the leading phase that is on phase A, I have connected a load Z A which is equal to nominally 50 kilowatt that is when the voltage is 250 volts it is 50 kilowatt at 0 0.8 lagging power factor. And I have connected another load Z B to the lagging phase this current is I A this current is I B equal to this is 60 kilowatt at 0 0.7 lagging power factor that is the load is unbalanced. So, neglecting no load current we are expected to find out what will be the three phase input currents I A, I B and I C. Obviously, the 
turns ratio n2 by n1 equal to Vb by Vbc equal to 250 divided by 6600 or n1 by n2 equal to 26.4. Now, if we choose VBC to be the reference phasor, VBC to be the reference phasor, this is 6600 angle 0 degree. <coughs> This is VBC, this is VAB, this is VCA, VBC is the reference phasor, then we know VA equal to 250 volts angle 90 degree and VB equal to 250 volts angle 0 degree. Therefore, the load currents I A equal to 50 kilowatt <coughs> divided by This is 50 kVA, let me check this is 50 kVA at 0 0.8 and this is 60 kVA at 0 0.7. So, the load current I A is 50 kVA divided by 250 at an angle of 90 minus cos inverse 0 0.8 or I A equal to 200 amperes at an angle of 53.13 degrees. Similarly, phasor I B equal to 60 kVA divided by 250 amperes at an angle of minus cos inverse 0 0.7 that is I B equal to 240 amperes at an angle of minus 45.57 degrees. So, this is V A, this is V B, This is I A equal to 200 amperes and this angle is 53.13 degrees. If this is I B equal to 240 amperes and this angle is 45.57 degrees. So, what will be the line current capital I A?
capital I A we have seen is given by two by root three into n two by n one into I A. Hence, this comes to two by root three into one by twenty six point four into two hundred angle fifty three point one three degrees. This comes to eight point seven five and here at an angle of fifty three point one three degrees. Now IBC will be equal to N two by N one into IB. Hence this will be one by twenty six point four into two forty angle minus forty five point five seven degrees this comes to nine point zero nine one angle minus forty five point five seven degrees. Therefore the current I B will be equal to min I B C minus I A by two that is nine point zero nine one amperes angle minus forty five point five seven degrees minus eight point seven five by two amperes angle fifty three point one three degrees. Once we do the calculation it comes to ten point six seven ampere angle of minus sixty nine point four eight degrees. <coughs> the phasor I C will be minus I B C minus I A by two that is minus nine point zero nine one ampere angle minus forty five point five seven degrees minus 8.75 by 2 amperes angle this comes to 9.47 amperes angle 161.6 degrees so if we draw the phasor diagram we had taken vbc to be the reference phasor The current I A is 8.75 amperes at an angle of 53.13 degrees. This is the reference direction. So, this is let us say current I A. This angle is 53.13 degrees. 
and the current IB is 10.67 ampere at an angle of almost minus 70 degrees. So, this is IB this angle is 69.48 degrees the magnitude is 10.67 amperes on the other hand IC is 53.13 degrees plus 69.48 degrees. This comes to 50. Between I A and I B, this angle is 122.5 six one degrees. Similarly, what is the angle between I C and I A? I A and I C this angle is one sixty one point six degrees minus fifty three point one three degrees. This angle is 108.47 degrees. So, we see that when the load current is unbalanced, the current supplied by the three phase side in a Scott connected transformer is also unbalanced. Now, one extreme case of unbalance is, of course, a single phase load. A Scott connected transformer can be used to supply a single phase load. same connection this is 50 percent tapping this is 86.7 percent tapping For single supplying single phase load, We connect these two points.
and connect the windings in series. this is how at the single phase load is connected. So, the current here is I A this is the current I B. If we look at the phasors this is the voltage V B, this is the voltage V A. If we look at the phasor diagram, this is the input side phasor, this is V B, this is V A, the load voltage is V L, I A equal to I B equal to I L here. This is V B, this is V A, hence the load voltage is the vector sum of V A plus V B which is here this is the load voltage V L and let us say this is the load current I L equal to I A equal to I B. Hence, we see that this is a special case of unbalanced loading, but the magnitudes of the two phase currents are same, but their phase angles are not same. So, what will happen here? The current I capital A will still be in the direction of I L, but now I B C which is this will also be the direction of I B C. will actually be root 3 by 2 times I B C. Two by root 3 times. So, I B and I C will be I B will be I B C minus I A by 2 so I B will be somewhere here and I C will be minus I B C minus I A by 2 I C will be somewhere here. So, even in the three phase side the line currents will be all in phase. That is what happens when a Scott connected transformer secondaries are connected in series to supply a single phase load. Thank you.